Dice Tower Tonight, Episode 21. Getting ready for Dice Tower Con 2018. Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, we're all back home this week with hopefully stable internet connections. We'll chat about some recent games, we'll figure out Tom's next review, and then we'll take your questions live. I'm Eric Summerer, and joining me now, the Mark Summers and Liza Koshi of Board Gaming, Tom and Crystal. I would totally host Double Dare if given the oh, yeah. opportunity. <laughs> we have been watching tonight? it all week. They've had episodes every night this week. They premiered on Monday, and they've had episodes every night. It's it's pretty cool. My kids are having a blast watching it. Wait, who's who's doing it, though? So Mark Summers is still on the show, the original host, but he's okay, sort of... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not a nerd. What I meant was, who, what TV network has it on? Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. It's back on Nickelodeon, where it originally aired. Yes. Uh, and and Mark Summers. online. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked. But Mark Summers oh, is behind the, the, the dad desk. Uh, it's sort of this, uh, you know, sigh. He does the announcing that Harvey used to do. He announces the prizes and stuff, and he sort of helps with some of the physical challenges. But the main host is Liza Koshy who's, I guess, a YouTube star? I didn't yes. know her before seeing her. Yeah, show. she's got a pretty prominent YouTube channel. Yeah. But it's been fun. I like it. Oh, I'm not downloading another streaming service just to watch Double Dare. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. I see it's, Double Dare live anyway, so. Well, it's, it's really fun. I mean, they, they have it. It's almost identical to the original show, other than the two-host format. And they've, they've increased the dollar amounts, but they still send the kids to space camp, which is pretty cool. That is cool. I didn't even know space camp was still a thing. <laughs> Me too. Uh, it's, and it's the same place. I, I saw the little clip. I'm like, oh, that's where I went. That's it. That's the very place. Wow. So, cool. Well, folks, welcome to Dice Tower tonight. We're not actually a Double Dare fan podcast. But we could be. <laughs> um, we could be a fan thing. You know, I'm just going to, I feel like I have to keep this show on the rails with both of you here now, because you're both very geeky together. What? With our powers I, combined. I, of course. Oh, I just watched the final episode of Voltron with my Ooh. kids. And it was, uh, since I haven't watched it since season one, I was, I was very confused. Yeah, I think I'm somewhere in season three. I haven't, haven't kept keeping up. So anywho, uh, this is Dice Tower tonight. Did we go through the introductions? I completely missed that. I maybe. I mean, you didn't introduce yourself. I, I mentioned that you were here. Oh, okay. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Crystal Pisano. And I'm Eric Summer. So we got a lot to fit in tonight because it has been an incredibly busy week for well, me at least. All week long. I've been in the morning crunching together as much video as possible. Like video, 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 video. And then the rest of the day I work on Dice Tower Con. That's <laughs> They start con is a week from now. Well, actually, less than a week. I can't Hooray! wait. So Yay. excited! <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm always excited about Dice Tower Con. There's there's good things about every con, right? Um, and Dice Tower Con, other than Dice Tower Cruise, is is my favorite for several reasons. One, just being that everyone is. It seems like everyone's going to be there. You know, Eric and Crystal will be there. I mean, there's just the the whole gang is there. The whole gang of dice guys is there. The little yes. dice guys they have making. I'm having, I've commissioned one giant painting of all of them interacting. Ooh. Wow. That's going to be neat. Yeah. But first, I need to get nine more finished. So, <laughs> wow. It's a, a tall order. No, they're all shorter than me. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, since that's the case, today we'll talk about one game each. And then we're going to get into our game, and then we're going to get into Dice Tower Con. But before we do that, I would just like to clarify that the reason Crystal's not yet talked about the button war. No, no, War of the Buttons was not supposed to come to me. <laughs> oh, it's not? No, it was supposed to be Groves, and if that got shipped to me, it got lost. Because I have not received it, at least not to my knowledge. <laughs> so... Why do I keep thinking it's more of the buttons? I don't know. I'm. I swear I'm not. The second time we've had this conversation, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're just deja vuing a little bit here. But I believe, assuming I haven't misremembered something, that Groves was supposed to come my way. <laughs> okay. All right. Never mind then. 
everything I just said was a lie. So I'm gonna <laughs> talk about the game real quick. Uh, well, here I've got one. So I actually got a an early copy of a game that is currently on Kickstarter. Um, it is called Super Tall. This is not a final copy of the game. This is a a demo, a you know a review copy. Um, Super Tall is in the button shy line of games, meaning there's just 18 cards total and they fit into the size of a wallet. It only has, I think, a couple of days left on Kickstarter. Um, so it's nearing the end of their campaign. But I am a big fan of the button shy line of games. So I was very excited for the opportunity to try this one. It is for two to three players. And in this game, you are constructing skyscrapers. Each player has a number of skyscrapers that are theirs. And then there's some adjacency to both City Hall and the other players' skyscrapers. Um, you're building each skyscraper with a number of different types of cards. Um, there are four different types, red, blue, gray, and green, that represent residential, entertainment, business, and nature. And you kind of splay the cards out in each skyscraper. And whatever card ends up on the top of a skyscraper determines the type of skyscraper that it is. And then it will score points based on the different cards that ended up within it and the ones that are adjacent to it. Uh, and then City Hall will take one of the types of cards and make it not score anything as a result of tax. So uh, on your turn, you're either you're drawing a card from one of three piles and you're either adding it to one of the skyscrapers using the special ability that's listed on the card or one other thing that I can't can't remember off the top of my head all of a sudden. And uh, you're just adding to the skyscrapers until uh, all the cards run out and then you total up points and that's it. It's really quite simple, um, but there's a lot of interesting strategic decisions within it. I, uh, I didn't understand the rules right, reading them right off the bat, but I know that they're working on those and it, I was able to figure it out eventually and I had a lot of fun with it. I've played it both two and three players. I think I prefer it two player. Um, but it's fun, and I like I said, this isn't the fi necessarily the final artwork, but I think the cards look pretty nice. Uh, there's some interesting little fun details in some of the cards, like like an apartment will have a little open pizza box in it, or like this uh, nightclub has a whole bunch of fun little colored bottles in it, stuff like that that really isn't necessary, but it kind of uh, adds a little bit to the theme and the ambiance. So like that it. is. Uh, by Nat, Nat Levon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. And that is called Super Tall. And it is currently on Kickstarter. So if people want to go check that out, they can. Is your game on Kickstarter, Eric? My game is not on Kickstarter. It's a very small press sequel. I caved. I had to try Dos. <laughs> the sequel to Uno. Oh, boom! From, from the cow. <laughs> No, so, so <laughs> I had heard it existed, and I said, yeah, "All right, fine." It it was very inexpensive, and I picked it up when we were at Target the other day. In Dose, you have some very familiar-looking cards. I'm so sorry to our listeners. No, no, this is what uh, weren't people curious about this? Maybe you looked at it and you're like, "That can't be good." It may. Let's, Eric, let's find out. I will admit, I was not going to buy this, but I am curious to hear about it. There so. you go. Yes, so, so my. Go the ahead. Cards, <laughs> the cards look very familiar. They come in the four colors, and they have the numbers uh, one through nine. Oh, ten. One through ten. There are also the familiar-looking wild cards. This is a wild two, which X is two in any of the colors. And there's also another type of wild card that is, I'm looking for it now, it is a wild number. Um, Come on. It's in here somewhere. I know it is. It must be. There's one of each color, or there's there's several of each color. There we go. I found it. It's the um, pound symbol. Wild number. It's any number in blue in this particular case. So, Uno, you've got the deck of cards. You've got one card face up, and you're trying to match cards to that one pile. In Dose, there are two piles. There's two <laughs> cards that get turned face up uh, in the center of the table. You need to match the number uh, number is what you're trying to go for here. Match the number of one or both of those cards, either with the exact match from your hand or with numbers that add up to that number. So if it's a four on the table, I could put a three and a one down and match it. Now, if I have the same color, then I get a bonus. If it's a single card and I've matched the proper color, then uh, I get to, what do I get to do? I get to play a second card down to the table. Yes. So I've, I finished playing. And I get to play at the end of my turn another card from my hand down to the table, which helps me get rid of my cards more quickly. 
if it's a double match where I spend two cards to match up to something and I match the color on both of them, not only do I get to get rid of another card, but I also get to make everybody else draw a card. Now, because there's multiple cards out on the table, you can match one or both, or sometimes due to those extra cards being played, multiple cards on the table. So you can get rid of a whole bunch of cards at once if you play your combinations correctly. Once you're done, everything that you match to comes off the table. So rather than playing on the same pile over and over again, you have constantly new cards being brought out. And there's always at least two cards on the, on the table, but you can have more. And then it's the next player's turn. Uh, of course, if you have exactly two cards in your hand, you have to say dose or else you have to draw cards. Um, and that's about it. Uh, you then, when somebody goes out, you get points based on what's in everybody else's hand. The wilds are, of course, worth more points. Everything else is face value. Pretty standard Uno rules at that point. You play to a certain point total. I did find that the game is different enough from Uno to be its own thing. It's sort of like how there's the, the six nymphed family of card games. You've got 11 nymphed and X nymphed, and those are distinct things. This is sort of the case with Dos and Uno. It is, however, I think very simple because you can have multiple cards on the table that offer so many options for matching what you have in your hand. We found it almost too easy to go out quickly in just a couple of turns. Um, we had one round where not even everyone had one turn. Uh, somebody just went boom, 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 and I'm out. Um, which is a little weird. And I know this is supposed to be mass market and simple, and, and it's certainly a beer and pretzels sort of light family card game. That's what it's intending to do, and it does that quite well. But I almost think it's too simple and too too quick to go out. <laughs> just say it's terrible, Eric. It's, it's not terrible, but... I don't think it's going to hit the table very often. It's it's a little too shallow for me. Okay, That's, well, does does Uno ever hit the table, though? Uno rarely hits the table without um, specialized rules. We often play... If we're going to play Uno, we're going to play by the, the, like the speed play rules where you're slapping the table and all these extra layers of, of rules that come in using two decks at once. And, you know, that I need Uno to be a little more in-depth to begin with. So Okay, those, so do you, do, do you like this more or less than Uno, then? Like, assuming, none, without house rules. Standard rules. One. Yeah. I think Dose offers more opportunities. There's there's a little more fun. It, instead of Uno's, you know, draw and go, eh, okay, go, pass. Um, This at least lets you, and you, in fact, even if you can't play, you do the draw, and if you can't play that card you drew, you still get to get rid of a card from your hand. Uh, So you haven't increased your hand size, you just haven't made it go down on that turn. Okay. Which is fine. It because it's such a fast game, you don't want that that level of being pushed back. I I do prefer Dose to Uno, um, just because it has more choices. Okay. Yeah, ever since Windows came out, I stopped playing DOS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's more interesting than the whole. That game is just a bunch of stolen parts from other games. I mean, a lot of game. games you could say that about, though technically. Yeah, technically, whatever. Okay, let me show you an actual good game. I'm so excited. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I take it now back. Wait. I take it back. Now listen. <laughs> okay, never mind. I want it again. <laughs> no, that's not the game. I'm. This is this is the only game I have on me to show uh, because I took this and played it with the kids today. It's basically just about making long cows. Oh my gosh, and it says on the box, an utterly ridiculous game. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Actually, I'll talk real briefly about Light Seekers. So, if you remember, Light Seekers was really close to our booth at Origins, Eric. Yes, yes indeed. It's a new collectible card game. I believe they're making a Warhammer game that's similar system to it. Uh, essentially, you're making a deck of magic cards that are one of six different colors, and you fight someone else and try to knock their life down. Big shocker, I know. It's very unique and interesting. But it's it feels a little bit different. You can play any card in your deck, almost. You have like 30 regular cards and five combos. The 30 regular cards, you can just simply play them. You don't have to like worry about costs because, I mean, you could worry about costs, but if you pick cards that match your leader, then you just play them all. And some of them just attack and do damage. Some defend. Some you put on a table and they rotate and they do damage every turn. They do a little bit of damage. 
And so you got to find I, I you got to find the right combo to beat your opponent. Then you have these big combo cards that you have to you do have to pay a few cards to use them, and they do this massively cool stuff. So I've played it I think like five times now, and I'm still not sure what I think about it. I'm going to build a deck next. We we have some booster packs, we open them and everything. We're going to build some decks, and I'm going to see if building decks is a lot of the fun. Because it seems very straightforward. I don't sit there and go, hmm, what decision should I make? It's basically just, do I play this card now or not? It works really well. My kids have enjoyed it, the ones that I've played it against. So I don't know. I'm still kind of waffling on it. It seemed, it seemed very popular at Origins. Hmm. That's Light Seekers, which I don't have any pictures to show you guys because I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> but what I did bring... We're all waiting. What is it? What could it be? Is a bag of... Well, wait. Wait a minute. Let me give these guys free publicity. Never mind. A random <laughs> black bag that I happen to have. <laughs> it's time for our game show. Oh, this boy. This time it's guaranteed that Eric and Crystal will get the games because I'm going to bring these with me. Ah. But there's also a twist because I like twists. Uh-huh. <laughs> Never the same game twice, Tom. Uh, I'm picking small games. Why? So you because... don't have to carry them? No, no, no. It's not that. I just didn't feel like giving you guys big games. Um, so here we go. We got eight of them. Was that the eight. twist? That they're just, they're small? No, no, no. No worries. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. We're going to go through these. What? Okay, never mind. Ignore the part where I said there was a twist. <laughs> this is going so well. No, I just, I just think that you guys, you guys worry too much. I mean, that's I you, definitely true. I've sent you nothing but good games. Uh, so, do we need to decide who who gets the the prime position, the pole position for uh for this set? Hang on, my monitor is going kabooey. Is my camera doing the same thing? No, no. your camera's fine. Oh man! Well, well, oh, that now, did something. Yep. Yeah. Now your camera's gone. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me though? Yes. Yes. I'm back. All right. Here we go. So here we go. Round <laughs> one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Round one is me showing off these games, and then you both, you both get to eliminate one. Any game you want, you can eliminate. But first, the crowd eliminates one. So three out of the eight games will be gone. Then. Okay. Round two, we will let the crowd eliminate one. And then, can you guys see me? No, we no. cannot. <laughs> ah. You seem really happy about not well, being seems... seen. I thought we were playing a game in the dark. I know that. I was like, oh, here's the twist. We don't actually get to see the games. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> well, that actually would be not a horrific thing. You can't can go see by me title still alone. can't see me. No. Nope. Well, this is very dis disconcerting. This is the twist. I mean, yeah. Oh, never mind. I see what happened. Uh, we don't, because we can't see you. Can you see me now? There yeah, okay, you are. Here dice tower. Tentacle. Technical pinnacle. Okay, is the dice tower tonight. Okay, so anyhow. <laughs> so we have eight games. We're going to eliminate three in round one. Solely on based on the name of the game. We have five left. The audience will then pick one to get rid of. You guys uh, will let Crystal get rid of one of the remaining ones. Then we'll be down to three. The audience will get rid of one. Eric will pick one of the remaining two to keep, and Crystal will get the other one. Why does Eric get the pick in the final round? Because he's lost so many times. We're going to pretend he won the game show tonight that Wait, we didn't I, have time to do. We're just going to pretend I won? <laughs> well, I think you should be thankful for small favors. I You know what? I think I think it, I think that seems fair. It does Eric seem only, fair. What are you What are Eric you complaining only, about? Eric only does well in games when I create them for him because you know I know Eric so well. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here are the eight games. Number one, Robotech what? Force of Arms. All right, this is a game. The first Robotech War comes to life in this fierce head-to-head -head card game. So this is the first one. You can be, you're going to play either the Robotech Defense Forces or the Zen, Zentradi. Zentradi. 
Centrati. I'm sorry. It's been like 20 years since I've seen this cartoon. Anyway, it's a two-player card game. 20 to 30 minutes. Here's the back of the box. That doesn't show you anything. Tough. It's Robotech. You can tell that I have no, no nonsense gaming mood here. All right. Game number two is 1920 Wall Street. By the way, for some reason, Eric, you've played these before. Tough. That's the rules of this game. They're just tough a lot. This is uh, a car with dynamite explodes in the most famous financial district in the world. What does it have to do with anything else? Oh, you have to be the most richest stockbroker when everything blows up. There's the back. You can see a little bit of what's inside. Ooh, ooh. The company here is Looping Games. The first company was Harmony Gold, which actually sounds like a record album company. All right, that's two so far. You feel you feeling them? Uh, <laughs> let's sure. see what else you've got, Tom. All right, Fan Hunter Assault. This year, the world is living under the, the repressive boot of Alejo One. How could you be somebody one? How do you know this could be a two? Anyhow, uh, this is inspired by the principles of Philip K. Dick. No, 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 I'm sorry. This guy established a dictatorship based on Philip K. Dick, his favorite writer. I mean, a group I of like diehard fans stories. is not going to let him. Wait, he's proclaimed himself Pope. What? Uh, I'm a little confused <laughs> at this point. Well, so is my dog. So I was going to just say that. All right. So here's the back of the box. It looks okay. interesting. This is from Devere. Devere makes some good games. Yes. Okay. Game four. Comes with some promo cards for those who care. This one is from Wads Games. We're actually running out of game company names. <laughs> it's Top Hats and Treachery, which don't necessarily go together. Uh, the fast-paced game of strategy, storytelling, prestige, and charmingly elegant backstabbing, all set in the Victorian age of wonders. And you can see here some people who look very, very like the, the people who made this game couldn't afford artwork, so they're using public domain pictures. That's, that's indeed what it looks like. Top hats and treachery. Don't discount it. Might be amazing. Next one is from Brain Games. What's Brain Games best known for? Ice Cool. That's right. Actually, Ice Cool 2, which will be at Dice Tower Con. So, okay, All I know right. it's going to be in the hot game section. Are they going to set it up with both games together, though? We will not allow otherwise. Okay, good. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. No, no not I just... believe you. I, that's why I, I, I was asking in a very serious way because okay. I'm excited. <laughs> I have rubber banded them together. They cannot be separated. <laughs> they shall never be torn asunder. Orc Olympics. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, this is from Brain Games. So, hey, maybe. Um, boulder tossing, table flipping, poison brewing. Let the Orc Olympic Games. This is a card drafting game for serious and casual, which is everybody, <laughs> gamers. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to cover all their bases. All right. You know what? Here's the thing. And you're both thinking this in your heads. You're thinking, this is not that bad of a lot of games, Tom. You are thinking that. All right. The next one. Dr. Whale R. Leslie, a Timberman. I think I was actually saying some Polish words incorrectly. Look at that. Digital Lumberjacks. Oh. I would read you the back of the box, but it's not in English. However, it came with this sheet that's a fake back of the box. Look, woo, changing it to English. <laughs> um, over 30 million players could not be wrong. What does that mean? There's no 30, way 30, 30 million, million players play this game. What a, you guys should be eliminated just for lying. Uh, it's a, You are placing tiles here. And you're trying to get majorities of lumberjacks next to trees. There you go. Next. Now, this game is from a company. It doesn't say, actually. World Shapers, I guess. But the cover looks neat. Zumaka. You're competing to be the first to open your zoo. You have to collect animals of different types. So look at the cards, though. Don't those cards look cool? Yeah. 
It would looks it be, classy. Classy. Would it be Zoom Maker if you're making the zoo? Zoo Maker. No, it sounds like a musical <laughs> instrument. All right. And the last one is from Pegasus Spiel. Santa Domingo. Hmm. This one here is by Stefan Risthaus. It's illustrated by Clement Franz because he just does all these games. Uh, but it looks like um, Port Royale, right? That The cards actually look like that in the back there, don't they? Yeah. But it's not. It's the port of Santo Domingo. Hums with activity. Blah, blah, blah. You're trading goods. <laughs> There's 60 cards, 15 wooden markers, and two game board pieces. All right. Now, I feel like I presented you guys with an excellent slate of games. Uh-huh. Here's the twist one, though. Whatever games I you pick here at the end, you're going to have to play with me. I feel that's only fair because we're going to be at Dice Tower Con. I like it. Sure. That's a fun twist. That's the fun one, yes. All right, <laughs> Wait, so no. <laughs> we have – I'm going to let the audience eliminate one first, and then you both eliminate one. So Fan Hunter Assault, 1920 Wall Street. Robotech, Force of Arms, Orc Olympics, Top Hats and Treachery, Zumaka, Zumaka, Timberman, and just say Santa Domingo. All right, so you guys, you vote. The one that you're voting for is the one we're kicking out. And then each of these folks, fine folks in the program, will pick one out to kick out also. All right. Let's see. You guys can see the, the chat. Well, no, Eric can't because he doesn't read chat for whatever reason. I can look at the chat. Well, you're not going to like it then. Oh, wait. Now it's, oh, wait. It was one game, but now another game's catching up. Ooh. The pressure's on. Huh. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, wait. Some more votes for the other one. <laughs> this is like I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna have to give it to Robotech being kicked out. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, Eric. I know that you had your eye on it. Eh, you know, that's okay. Get out of here! <laughs> it, it's fine. I meant for it to land on that pile of beanbags behind me. That did not happen. Oh. All right. Now you both get to eliminate one. Would you like to eliminate Orc Olympics, Timberman, Zumaka, Top Hats and Treachery, Santa Domingo, 1920, Fan Hunter Assault? Crystal, why don't you go first? Uh, okay. I am going to eliminate. 1920 Wall Street. Wow. That one actually looked good. You know, you say that every time I eliminate a game, and I just don't believe you at this point. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty good because so far the games you picked haven't been fun. I'm just I saying that now. All right. Okay. For the record, so we're going to set this one. <laughs> if you notice, I'm not throwing this one over my shoulder. I'm going to set it over here carefully. Oh. All right, Eric. Wait, is that the twist? Um, I'm going to choose to ditch uh, the Lumberjack game, Timberman. All right. Goodbye, Bye -bye. Timberman. That was going to be gone anyway, probably from the audience. That was their second pick here. That was my Timberman. other one that I would have eliminated as well. I so. oh, I'm also going to set that one over to the side for now. Oh, right. no. That's the twist. Oh, something's going to happen. I don't feel I – I have a bad feeling about this. Man, we're going to have to play Timberman. <laughs> All right, so here we got Fan Hunter Assault. I'm now going to open it up and look and see what's inside it. Um, so in it, the rule book here looks like a comic book. Okay, it's actually nice. De Devere does some pretty good artwork and stuff, so that's not a bad thing. We got some characters here. You could be a comic book geek, or you could be a gamer or otaku. Are any of these people actually fighters? Magic nerd. <laughs> Lethal fan. Movie buff. All right. Oh, and um, Robin Hood. <laughs> what 
what, what does this uh, have to do with Philip K. Dick? I'm so confused. Oh, wait. Here's Chef Rybick. <laughs> oh, Dr. X Strange. Well, these are all different. Okay. Oh, here's. Are there uh, any Rick, androids or electric Sky? sheep present? Because then I would maybe understand something. That's what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> um, no, just, well, not in this deck. So. Ah. I don't know that I would want to play a board game based on Philip Dick stuff. It's really I'm, depressing. I yeah. Mean, this stuff is like, after I read one of his short stories, I have to go like sing a lullaby or something. Um, Sim City, Gel Boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I do All like right, puns. Setting your Catans. There's some oh. board games in here. There you go. War this of the Rings. This is the weirdest mishmash of things that I... Signed Watchmen. Well, it's set at a convention. Uh, Batman's utility bag. It is set at a convention. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's still one more deck. Maybe the third deck will be the third. Hey, Dick. Why? It's eating me! Um, <laughs> looking for a smoothie. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. No one does. Pensionary. Nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just going to have to say this is just, this is nerdy stuff. I don't know. I think they must have just put Philip Dick's name on the back. Oh, here's Stoned Age. Okay, that's just. <laughs> Come on, that was a little funny. A minute. <laughs> All right, so is it based on Shirley Jackson's The Lottery? <laughs> That's even worse than Philip Dick's stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> so I had expunged that story from my head. Too late. Sorry, to brought it back. Spoiler. I had to read that in high school. Did you read that in high school? Uh, no, Why did I you actually, just read that in high school? What's weird, I read that as a kid just like casually. I think my mom or my dad had it, and I picked it up and read it and was very sad. <laughs> it's a terrible story. Okay, anyway, so that's Fan Hunter Assault. Sorry for our, our grim side notes. All right, now we're at Santa Domingo. I bet when I open this, I'm going to see rules that look like Lookout designed them. Shocking. Okay. Some boards here. Ooh, puzzle pieces. Yeah, Thank cute. You. And then, you know, if you, ever, if you ever know someone with a lot of Pegasus games... I think one way to, to really make them mad would be to take all the cards of those games and mix them together. Oh. They would never know which card went with what game. Like, if I showed you this card and said, what game is it? You'd be like, Port Royale! No, wait! So, or like a ship card. Come on now. I think he's reusing artwork here, too. Uh, a scorecard? I don't know. These are mostly captain cards, score cards, and chip cards. That's pretty much everything in this game. I don't know what that means. Might be good, might be bad. That is Santa Domingo. I'm a man who has no sympathy for any of these games. That's actually a lie. I, there's always one I hope you guys pick and you never do. All right. Top Hat comes with a rule book with very hard rules to read. And then, of course, a page and a half of Kickstarter backers. Wow. I think if I ran a, a board game Kickstarter and I asked you for your name to put in the in the rule book and you said something like uh, raining, just the word raining, R-A-I-N-I-G with a small R, I would say you don't get to be in the rule book. <laughs> I, I never understand this. You think, and especially when I try to put it into a game. We just recently played a game, a space game, and it was like fluffy something as one of the guy's names. And I was like, come on now. You could have said no to that Kickstarter backer. All right, this is the blue sickle, a uh, blue sky's rest. What does that mean? It, it's like a plus one to the middle class. It says silver shot, the cathedral of learning, with a Kickstarter backer. That's clearly a Kickstarter backer. Here's another Kickstarter backer. 
No, tell me that's not a Kickstarter backer. Come on, no, I'm, not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just laughing in general. <laughs> companies need to stop doing this. If you're going to put Kickstarter backers in your game, that's fine. But you need to make it obvious that you need to make them look like they're from that time frame. Like this lady. That's fine. That's obviously from that time frame. You know, but those other people were definitely Kickstarter backers. Oh, Charles Darwin's in the game. So is definitely Oscar a Kickstarter Wilde. backer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he would not have backed Kickstarters. He would have been like, let the strong survive of the Kickstarter. <laughs> like, shut up and go away, Charles. <laughs> yeah, these are all like famous people from history. Well, or people from history. Like, I don't know who. <laughs> or or people Lennon. from history. You know, all people. All people. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. What I meant was they're real. Look at Sarah Lemon's quote here. Read it. I can't. Honestly, poor people are so tiresome. Well, that's just mm. rude. Isn't that that's something you want to be remembered for? So, what was your final words? Yeah, someone needs to tell Sarah that she needs a lesson in etiquette. I'm pretty sure Sarah's dead. I'm sorry to to have spoiled this for you. <laughs> <laughs> what you're sad now? Oh yes, that was real crying, Tom. That's exactly what I sound like when I'm <laughs> actually crying. <laughs> I've been a lot of snark from the contestants of this game show. <laughs> I'm, I, just, I believe... I'm just getting warmed up because I'm going to see you in person in less than a week, and I'm real excited about it. <laughs> yeah, it's always funny when new people come to the game group and they're like, oh, are you Tom Vassell? And the guys are like, he's an idiot. Sit down and just play a game with him. Like, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh. Look, the Grim Reaper has made an appearance. Writers only. Wait, I'm now I'm concerned because that's what I do for a living. <laughs> Hang on. This guy wants to kill only upper class. Oh, okay. So the there's different Grim Reapers depending on your uh, profession or status in life. That makes plenty of sense. I want a personalized the Grim Reaper. Is, they're all wearing they're all wearing hat, top hats. I think these are also Kickstarter backers. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a bunch of cards. There's a bunch of cards that have cool sides on them, and also there's a bunch of cards that are just called shenanigans. You know, right, I'm kind of hoping that this game is halfway good because it's given me some great amusement. Yeah, it's good. top hats and treachery. Okay. All right, I'm really curious about what's inside this one because I'm hoping the cards are as cool looking as the back led me to believe. All right. I mean, maybe. I'm down for any kind of a rainbow anything, so. Yeah, I think so. All right, so here we go. Cow. It should be brown, though, I believe, but... Oh, here's monkeys for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and the chimps a... for free? <laughs> Draw all three cards, baby. Yeah, okay. So there's a whole stack here of colorful cards. Some of them are rainbow cards, but they look like action cards. And other ones just look like animals. Sure looks like there's a lot of action cards, though, doesn't it? But there's Indeed. another deck. So maybe this deck is just animals. The first one is a very colorful unicorn. Nope. Still tons of action cards. All the rainbow ones are action cards. Both Eric and I's eyes got very wide when you showed the unicorn, I'm just going to say. <laughs> I want a unicorn in my zoo. That's okay, here's a unicorn. Look at the unicorn. Wow. Oh. Unicorns are not real. Now. What? All right. Last but not least. Orc Olympics. Let's see what's inside this box. <laughs> All right. If there's tiny little orcs that we get to flick around, I'm in, but you know. No, that's not the case. I'm laughing at the artwork in this game. Take a gander. Oh. That's a Kickstarter backer. <laughs> no, that's not a Kickstarter backer thing. But that's definitely like a uh, a chibi. I mean, all right. So that's here's another one. That's Thor, kind of. Well, who is this? Oh, okay. He's dreamy. Oh, wait, here I found the orcs finally. Ugh, he's a little terrifying. She's a ninja, I think. Uh. That's kind of a weird genie. Oh, here's oh more orcs. 
And then these are some trophies that apparently Batman is chasing. I'm not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> and now this guy is carrying a rock while skipping. Am I, am I incorrect there? It looks like he's skipping. He's, I mean, he's doing a ballet with the rock. Yeah. Okay. And then this guy is dumb. <laughs> I feel like that's the only thing I can say there. All right. That's pretty much all that's in there. There's also some stands, which I think are for these little trophies we found earlier. Okay. So now it's time for the audience to eliminate another one. Hmm. Would you like to eliminate Orc Olympics? Zumaka. Zumaka. Top Hats and Treachery. Santa Dominga, Domingo, and Fan Hunter Assault. Pick one of them, and then Crystal will eliminate another one. Prancing. The guy wasn't, yeah, he was prancing. He wasn't skipping, said someone. That's excellent. Or sashaying. <laughs> All right. Well, this isn't looking good for one game. Mm. Someone said, all of them, never say that. We have found some excellent games by doing this. When I say we, I mean usually me. Okay, sorry. Top Hats is gone. Oh. All right, Top Hats is out. Yeah! Nailed the beanbag. See it? <laughs> it only took you three times. That was the second time. All right. This is Crystal tough. pick one to eliminate. You know, but when you say eliminate... I'm I'm concerned as to what that means at this point. It means eliminate. Come on now. <laughs> um, I am gonna go with Fan Hunter Assault. Fan Hunter Assault is out. Over to the All side. right. We have three. I'm just I'm being careful with games. That's what people want. Uh, yeah. So it's Dominga. All right. So now we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into these games. By me pretending to read the rules, not in German. Oh, uh, so I'm the only one that got to eliminate one that time. Eric didn't get a choice. I see. Eric oh, no. will eliminate one of the final ones. Ah. No. no, no, he won't. He gets to pick of the final two which one he wants to play. Okay. All right, so everyone's going to have some cards. They have eight a action cards. That's why all the cards look similar. So you have eight cards that are the same. And you're going to move a bunch of cubes on the wooden board here. And... On your turn, you're all going to play an action card. And, oh, it's like, okay, so it's the kind of game, so, like, depending on what cards you play, you're going to get points or you'll get goods or different things, depending on who else played the cards. So it's kind of like a simultaneous action card selection game. But the, the what happens when you play them will be changed, like, where the stuff is on the board and how many other people also played the card. I don't know if you guys have ever played a game like that. I, I tend to like those kind of games. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's Santa Domingo. Happy oh. Pigs is kind of like that. The number of actions you get is based on how many people play the same thing you did. I, I right. agree, but I also think if you play Happy Pigs, I really think you should um, play not the simultaneous selection, but play each person picks one at a time. Hmm. Oh, interesting. I've never done it like that. It plays better that way because you don't get messed over and it still lets you have a lot of strategic decisions. So Eric says, I'm going to, you know, grow pigs. I can say, oh, I could grow pigs, but I'm only going to get half if I do that. So I'll pick a different action. It works well. Hmm. All right. Zumaka. Zumaka. In this game, everyone's going to get six cards. Um, and you're going to be putting animals into a zoo. So you're going to be on your turn. You can do three actions, put an animal in your zoo, sell a card from your hand, move animals and add-ons in your zoo or play an action card or something like that. Some animals are multicolor, some are response and you're, there's an entrance card in your zoo. You have to pay a fee with money. I have no idea how you do that. I don't even know how you win, but there's an FAQ in here. There's 150 Kickstarter backers, but they only put in six. Um, they probably paid more money than the rest. So how do you win? Where's the winning thing? Oh, first to finish a zoo. You need four different types of completed park sections. The first player to complete their zoo is the winner. All right, so you need four different park sections. You're going to do that by placing animals down. So when you place an animal down, like, for example, this one here, you will then need three gray cards because it shows three symbols. If I decide to do the water buffalo, because everyone needs a water buffalo, 
Um, I got that Veggie Tales reference, Tom. Thank you. Eric <laughs> misses a lot of this stuff. <laughs> oh, I could sing a lot of silly songs with Larry. Like I, <laughs> I know a, a lot of those probably still by heart. I've actually performed some, but that's not the point. Zumaka. <laughs> Zumaka. <laughs> I'm going to keep laughing every time different. you do that, Eric. <laughs> and what you should learn to do is you don't laugh at dumb jokes. All right. But I like dumb jokes, Tom. That's true. That's probably why you're on the show. All right. Um, <laughs> so in this game, there's seven races, and each of these guys is a race. It shows your rarity, your speed. This guy's slow your cunning, and your strength. And you're going to reveal a competition each turn. You're going to build a team. You're going to get eight people. You're going to draft. You're going to draft these characters, but your team can only have three races because more than three races is not allowed. And then you will choose a card and put it face up with you, and you'll fight over each of these different competitions. And you're going to add up the skills that you have and then hand out points. So it seems like it's a simple drafting game. That's Orc Olympics. I'm trying to be faster so we can get this done with. All right, people, kick one out. Do you want to see Orc Olympics gone? Zumaka? Zumaka. Or Santa <laughs> Domingo. Hey, Eric, so much. <laughs> it's getting funnier. How is that possible? It's timing. Pick oh. one to kick out. No one's even voting. Oh, there we go. All right. Santa Domingo has one. Zoo has two. Two to three. Two, three, one. Two, five, six. Seven. Okay. It's not looking <laughs> good for the zoo game. No, wait. Some people are now arguing that it should leave Zubaka in so we can make a stupid joke. Oh, Santa Domingo's catching up now. No. That's the one I wanted to play. No, Zoo is catching up. Okay. I'm going to put Orc Olympics down because that one's safe. Zoo's all right. Zoo is out. See you later. Come on. Bye bye, Zoo man. <laughs> okay, it almost it almost made the beanbag. <laughs> Very it's close. close. Yeah. All right, Eric. Which of these games would you like? I would like Santo Domingo. All right, Crystal, you're getting Orc Olympics. All right. But wait, there's more. Oh, what I knew there would be. <gasps> what? So these three games that you guys kicked out, because you have no taste, I'm going to let people vote on one, and I'm going to force these two guys to play it with me at Dice Tower Con. <laughs> so you can vote for one of these that we will play. Fan Hunter Assault, Timberman, and 1920 Wall Street. So vote for one of these, and then the other two actually do get kicked out forever. So which one do you want us to play? Fan Hunter? This time you're voting for the one you want us to play. Wa Timberman. <laughs> no, 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 Chad, don't do that. Oh, gosh, I know there's a delay. So oh, it's it's... 20. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. It's all Timberman. Oh. 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 I, I was. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm not even that's... getting close now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't. I got the beanbag with one game, and I think it's on video. All right, so we'll be playing Timberman. Oh, yay! Nice All right, so I'll put these over here. All right, so we're talking about Dice Tower Con now, and... <laughs> got a hat up. Hey, I'm really excited about Dice Tower Con. If you guys haven't seen, I've released a video on our channel that talks about all the different things we're going to be doing. We'll be doing a live board game breakfast. We'll be doing uh, a top five overrated games, which Eric's going to say, do make a... <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so see, if I say it that way, what are you going to do? I, I, I don't ruin know. your own joke for you. Yeah. <laughs> so there's lots of different events, but the the how many Dice Tower Cons have each of you been to? One. All but all but one. <laughs> I went Don't last year one for the very liar, first time. Last year was my very first Dice Tower Con, and I thought, well, it's really, really far away from Nevada, 
geographically. So I'll probably come this one time. And then, you know, I probably will come maybe occasionally after that. And I went the one time and genuinely went, oh man, now I got to go every year. Cause it's that good. I know like Tom and all the people over in Florida talk it up real big, but honestly, like it is, and this is, <laughs> I run my own bar board game convention here in Las Vegas. Hang on so one moment. Hang on one moment. You're, you're cutting in and out and you're saying so many nice things about the con. <laughs> and I hate to waste that. <laughs> Am I not cutting out now? And is it better? No, go ahead. Okay. Go I ahead and say all the nice things about the con. I no, honestly, like Dice Tower Con is the best five days in gaming. Like legitimately. It is a very it's like it's big enough that there's tons of things going on, but it's small enough that you can always find somebody to hop into a game with. And all the Dice Tower contributors are there and playing games with people. And there's so many fun events. The Jack Vassal Memorial Fund auction is really awesome. Even if you're not planning on bidding on a thing, just going and seeing other people uh, bidding, you know, large amounts of money on games and other items and just seeing what items are available there. It's all honestly just so much fun. And I now have to fly to Florida at least once a year from Nevada because of it. So that's, that's what it is. It's wonderful. It really is. Yeah, this is so my... All, all but one. I missed the first one, but I've been. You missed the one. first one because the yeah. first one was like three hundred people. Yeah, and it was I, also a family reunion that year, so I I didn't think it would be a thing. So I was like, ah, you know this. <laughs> Eric didn't believe in it. <laughs> I believe now. Oh, but man, the difference from that first one where we were in a small hotel ballroom, the convention center we have now is pretty sweet. It uh, is. It's I was, nice. It's a really big convention center. I mean, it's really spacious and it never feels full. At least it didn't last year. We had it 300 full this year. Pff, I said last year, I said, man, we could add like 500. And I still don't think we would notice. Yeah, I mean, there was never a spot where you couldn't find a table. If you could find one in one ballroom, you could definitely find one in the other. I mean, but, and, how, and many board, <laughs> how many board game conventions have their own famous table that's actually tweeting live from the convention too. <laughs> I mean, P1 is where is the place to be, or it was last year. I'm hoping P1's back this year. I'm excited. I hope so okay. too. I wasn't as proud of that. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know who did it, but I think it was brilliant. So I just started playing there. That's all. Uh, I think we're the only con that serves actual breakfast the first day. So there's and that. this year you're doing it at board game breakfast, it, like specifically, right? Yeah, and then when and when we move eventually to a new hotel, I'll be like, man, it, it, we probably won't have that breakfast thing anymore. I'm gonna have to bring in donuts or something because we gotta keep that tradition alive, right? It is so, nice. Yes. So uh, I'm gonna take a couple questions here. We'll I'll answer them. We're gonna go a little bit over ten because um, a lot of people are worried about the heat. And I'll tell you this first of all. As a Floridian, it's hot down here in the summer, but it's hot all over America. Honestly, just wear what you would wear anywhere. The only difference in Florida is, it's a subtle difference, but you don't think about it, is the sun is closer. And if you burn easily, <clears throat> um, yeah, you might want to get some lotion, but that's only if you're outside. You literally can walk from your hotel to the convention center very quickly, and you don't even have to... They have like covered walkways all the way through. So the heat isn't bad and they run the air conditioning very powerfully. And people complained about the air conditioning. I have a lady in my game group who complains about it every year. In fact, she complained about it to me ahead of time. I said, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> but you can bring a sweater or sweatshirt. We're telling you that now. And last year on Saturday night, late Saturday night, the air went out. Mm. Were you there when it happened, Eric, or had you already gone back to the room? No, I was. I was in the in the area when that happened, and I also felt the relief when it came back on later that evening. And yes, you can tell the difference for sure. You don't want us to not run the air. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Just saying that. Yes. All right. What else we got? Questions. Donuts for breakfast. Wait, that's not that or on. Come on, if you go to like a place and they have donuts, like every church in the world has donuts for breakfast. Sure. My, co my coworkers bring in donuts for breakfast at work all the time. Dunkin' Donuts is extremely busy in the morning. I do not think I'm being like some oddball mentioning donuts for breakfast. No, donuts for breakfast is a thing. I think I'm just surprised it didn't show up in our poll question uh, at, uh, at Oregon. That's true. 
I did look it up too, and it's spelled two different ways. I looked up dough and dough. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what other questions do people have? Ambie says she went to Disney World the first two years. Need to take breaks and do inside rides. That's also because you're standing in line a really long time. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going down a day early and we're going to go to a park, but we always go to a water park. You're never hot there. True. Uh, can you tell us more about the Dice Tower games? Who participates? I, I don't know what that means. Is that a uh, an event in the Dice Tower con catalog? Maybe the game show? Maybe. Or it could be about magical athlete, theoretically. Well, Eric played Power Grid with me at Grand Con. Why are oh. you asking that? We're talking about Dice Tower Con. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I, Eric is is nicer than I am, so I'm gonna save him the trouble here. We love to play games with people, and we want you to approach us and ask us to play games at cons. Just realizing that we might say no, but it's in our best interest and for our sanity that we don't schedule them ahead of time, unless it's like a Kickstarter thing, because. That makes cons so much less fun for us. Mm. We have to run around. Okay, I got to be here at two. And oh, I was going to play a game with you, but this person. And it just, and we would get so many emails and stuff. I always tell people, you want to play a game with me? Catch me. <laughs> and then you run really fast. <laughs> Tom has Florida Stockholm Syndrome. Whatever. I love it here. I was glad to move here. I'm glad to stay. I think Florida is an amazing state. Are we doing any of the game shows live online? We are, and they're all scheduled already. I just scheduled them today, so you can go see them. We're doing the Board Game Breakfast live. We're doing our um, uh, Magical Athlete live, which uh, Crystal is refing that game. Yeah, I am. Although, I, am I getting a stripy shirt for that? Because I feel uh, like Well, I was going to bring you mine, but I think... It, you, you would be able to wear it as a full-length dress. Oh, that's all right. We talked about Ambie and I wearing it together and being a two-headed referee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I think I have <laughs> I, I have a couple ref shirts for whatever reason. I mean, Ambie and I like um, each other a lot. So I feel like if, if nothing else for a photo op, we could make that happen. <laughs> uh... Let's see here. Everyone's talking about donuts for breakfast. I'm sorry. Oh, we were talking about the, the shows that were streaming live. Yes. We're also streaming. The big one we're streaming live is Dice Tower Awards. Did you guys see the trophy for Dice Tower Awards? No. It's really, really neat. Yeah, it's so cool. I'm not here in my office. I have a little box here in my office that's all the name plates with all the winners, but you can't see that. Right. Um, although Eric does know all the winners, don't you? No, wait. You, you, do you? flash them at me and, and then like hit it again. So I, I nodded briefly and. Pretended I remembered what they were. Eric knows all the nominees. I know this because he read them all. I do. We do the, the video presentation. So I got to do the, and the nominees are, and listed them all out. It's cool to see it yeah, on the see, big screen. Someday when you like audition for Oscar, you'll be able to use this. You'll be like, well, I've done the Dice Hour Awards for 10 years. <laughs> um, and we're, then we're, so we're, we're streaming that live. And then Friday, we're streaming both the Jack Vassal auction, which again, is just a really fun thing to watch. It really you, is. I always I tell people don't go there to get a deal. Go there for two reasons. One, to watch people give money to a good cause, and two, to watch Eric almost break down talking. Uh yes, because they like to give me as tall a pile of games as possible and then see if I can do it in one breath, which is always the challenge to make me pass out. <laughs> I feel like that's a very fair, reasonable game. All right, people are still is pitch car happening at the con. Yes, we're having both the Pitch Car Championship of the World and Pitch Car Kids Championship of the World. And this is inside Tumbling Dice. And and the and me versus Bonacore are going to be doing uh Looping Louie rematch. And the winner gets to put a pie in the face of the loser. But what kind of pie? Well, see, I'm debating on this. I've been thinking about this because if I lose, I want the pie to be good, but I also feel like it's a waste of a pie. <laughs> So I'm wondering if maybe I should just get a plate and just put a pile of whipped cream on it. I mean, that seems that seems just as devastating, right? But it, I don't know. Doesn't it feel like it's a waste of pie? It depends on how wide you can open your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Do you eat it afterward? Okay, but then, I, well, I try to lose then. <laughs> uh, if it's key lime pie, then yes, you would, knowing you. Mm. 
All right, let's see. Oh, and so the, this year, if you remember last year, we had two big um, ballrooms, and the library was in one of the ballrooms. This year, the library is in its own room that's in between the two ballrooms. Oh, cool. So I think that you will see different people. Um, I think you'll see the ballrooms kind of split between the two, how busy they are. Hmm. Uh, well, Wits and Wagers be live online. We actually don't do Wits and Wagers at Dice Tower Con anymore. I think last year was the last time. We tried it last year. We were not happy with how it went. We're it, just it, too big. Yeah, it's gotten a little too big to even handle our system. Um, we had like 10 teams going at once, and each team had 15 people on it, and it was... So I've been working and bugging Northstar, and I'm continuing to bug them to get some sort of electronic system, like an app in play. And if that ever happens, we'll bring it back to Dice Tower Con. Until then, you're going to see it at small cons on our traveling show. Um, the Olympics of board games for this Dice Tower Games thing. It's a listed event with six sessions over four of the events. I know nothing about it. <laughs> huh. Will Jason get to sing? No. We're not even singing. Not at um, this time. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do you usually play games with other Dice Tower people, or do you spread out mostly? I try to spread out and, uh, you know, sit down at as many tables as possible. Although this is, because you said a lot of us are here, uh, it is often a chance to play with some of our cross-country colleagues. Um, so I, I do try and meet up with those folks, but I also try and peruse and browse and, and sit down at a game with people I've never gamed with before. Yeah, I have trouble because... Since I'm on the West Coast, I don't get to play with the, the Dice Tower people or the other contributors. And I also want to be able to play games with everybody. But I tend to, not necessarily intentionally, but I'll start playing games with a group. And then just because it's easier, I tend to sometimes migrate with the same group from game to game. Just because like, oh, we just all finished a game together. Let's play another game rather than, okay, now I need to go wander. And so I sometimes, and I don't really want to get into that groove, but it tends to happen for me. So I guess I kind of like what Tom said, if people want to play games with me, like come find me and getting ready to finish up a game and maybe try and grab me then. Cause otherwise I might just like naturally flow into another game with the same group. And it's not me trying to play with the same people the whole time. It just tends to happen for me. Yeah. You almost have to make a concerted effort to say, all right, had a great time. I really need to move and go somewhere else at this point. Which is tough because everyone is so wonderful and lovely that right. like, I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't well, want it I, to feel like it's a, it's a, you're, you're shunning that group. You don't, right. it's nothing against that, those people. It's just, you, you need to move on and, and, and try something else and meet some other people. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to, that's, I always do that. I'll say, Hey, that's a great game. Now I'm going to go play with someone else. Um, and cause there's 3000 people. And so w I can't play with everybody. If I played, a game with 10 people at a time, I would still need to play 300 games. Uh, so it's not possible. So there's a lot of us will split up. But the fact is, is that I believe, and I'm biased, obviously, but I believe the clientele of Dice Tower Con is at the highest caliber, and you will find amazing people to play games with there. Oh, yes. Also, the best chance you have to play a game with Tom is earlier in the morning, because that's when it's very quiet, and Tom's usually awake and playing, trying out stuff. So... <laughs> There's, there's, uh, I'll get there like around 6.45 or 7 or whatever when I get there in the morning. And there's like eight people in the convention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah. best time to catch me. Absolutely. Uh, although, yeah, I, I'm debating here. So I have a box of games. That's the box of games that I'm bringing with me that are possibly good, possibly bad review copies. But I'm also bringing some of the best games ever, you know, that are going into the Dice Tower library and stuff. So, I'll probably do a mix of the two, I think. That seems reasonable. But if you're going to play a game with me, there's a good chance you're playing a mystery meat game. <laughs> it's tough for me because I'm kind of a morning person generally, but because of the three-hour time difference, I'm definitely not a morning person, at least the first couple days of the con. Because, yeah, like the con starts at, what, 9 a.m. on Wednesday? So that's 6 a.m. for me. I'm not usually awake 
until seven or seven thirty my time. So that first day, that board game breakfast, I'm gonna need some coffee, but it will we'll manage, I'm sure. <laughs> all righty, all righty. Well, I think that's it. It's 10 10. So we're gonna end this one here, folks. We appreciate you watching another Dice Out Live. Here's the thing: we're gonna be doing this again two weeks, and at that time, we'll give you our post impressions of the convention. There is a lot of Dice Tower live coverage show, not just those shows, but also Chaz Marler and Marty Canal will be there just um, interviewing people and talking to folks Why we stand in the background and we'll wave because we'll be actually playing games. <laughs> no, but we're doing our shows at night. So there will be a lot of live coverage from Dice Tower Con. If you're not able to go, you will be able to. If you're like, oh, I wish I could have a ticket, seriously, we announce a long time in advance when these tickets go live. So be prepared next year because they're going to sell out faster. Also, there's still 15 rooms left in the Dice Tower Cruise, which isn't many. If you're coming to Dice Tower Con, we'll have a great time with you. And you might have a chance to play in one of these games because I'm bringing them. <laughs> Hooray! Oh, boy. <laughs> well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Crystal Pisano. And I'm Eric Summerer. And you've been watching or listening to the Dice Tower. Thanks for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Tom and Crystal will see you in two weeks for another installment of Dice Tower Tonight. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Tom, Crystal, and me, with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. Robinson Crusoe's exclamation upon his return to civilization provided by High Society. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at BoardGameGeek.com, on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at Dicetower at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have fun! Have fun, have fun gaming! gaming. I want to sing Timber Man like the theme song from that uh, video game Pepsi Man. Timber Man! <laughs> the whole time, nonstop. Yeah, all the time. <laughs>